Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, that's because we're going to be testing in just a sec. Which doesn't really explain why I'm dressed like this. Um, but either way, I'm probably looking actually more dirty than any actual Viking would. Anyway, so I made the handle out of this nice bit of ash here. And uh, took, you know, I, was, I was whittling away for ages. Um, and I was working on uh, the head to get the eye the right size. And I made it and it all fit. And then I stepped back and uh, I considered that the whole thing is just comically big. It is outrageously big for this axe. So what I'll probably do with that, because um, it's quite a nice oak, uh, sorry, a nice ash handle, I'll probably keep that around and um, perhaps I'll, uh, I've got a friend with a lathe, he might let me just turn it down and make it a bit smaller. And I want to make another one of these axes, so I might make a bigger one for that. Um, anyway, let's talk about the axe. Here's the fella. Uh, let me bring it in close so you can see. I mounted it on a different handle that's much more suited. It's beautifully light, like it weighs, I should weigh it actually, but it weighs practically nothing. Um, now an axe like this uh, could be used for a variety of reasons. Uh, historically, something like this would have been used as something akin to a belt axe or a, uh, a camp axe. It's a, a general utility tool. Um, if you were going out on, you know, a tool, if you're going out anywhere, you carry something like this. If uh, you just round your farm doing bits and pieces, you'd probably carry something like this. It serves as a multi purpose tool, much like we carry uh, knives around with us today. Uh, something like this will you can uh, you can chop wood uh, obviously small bits kindling and stuff um, you can use it for woodworking you can use it in self-defense it serves as a sidearm um, because it is so light it's quite effective and because of the thinness of it it means it's not very good at chopping wood but it does make it ideal for um, uh, fighting and you just use something like this there are so many conceivable ways you might uh, use an axe. I know that even I, when I'm just in the shop, I'm using an axe all the time for bits and pieces. Uh, they're handy to have around, and this is what this would be. You can stick, you can get this, you can stick it, just, you'd have a belt for it, but you can stick it in your belt and just not worry about it. It's not big enough that it's going to clonk around, uh, it's not so heavy that it's going to weigh you down, um, it's just an everyday utility tool. So, this has been sharpened up um, as sharp as I really dare make it. I don't want to make any sharper because of, uh, you know, you use it as an, as an axe, you don't want it razor sharp. Uh, I know some people do sharpen axes to a point where you can shave uh, hair off of it. But I think that you're going to lose that edge so quickly there's not much point. So I've given it a pretty sharp edge that should last a decent amount of time being used roughly for utility purposes. So let's have a little play around with it and we'll probably throw it once or twice as well. It would make a fantastic throwing axe actually. Um, I managed to recover most of the, the stuff from the overheating. There's a few little pot marks here or there, but it's generally quite good. It just meant I had to do more grinding than I would have liked to. Um, what else? Yeah, I'll probably be making another one of these. I'm, I'm slightly hesitant to give this away. I've actually uh, come to rather like it, so I'll probably make another one and maybe make it a bit, a bit bigger so it might suit that other handle, or at least a slightly smaller version of that handle. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned, we'll be having more videos in the near future. Uh, let's test this out. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's, it's not my best and I'd like to have another crack at it to try and improve upon it. Um, I certainly don't want to be making another handle from a lump of ash like that either. If I do that again, I'll probably just buy a nice plank of ash, uh, which are always straight grain and trace it out, cut and then round it all off. Maybe a nice belt sand, wouldn't that be nice? We could automate things rather than having to whittle away and manually sand. Anyway, let's test this. Okay, I'm going to call it a day now, it's getting dark and uh, I'm pretty satisfied in the quality of this. Um, the sharpness of it is uh, pretty good here. 
I could sharpen it some more. I know some people like to do it so that it shaves hair and such, but I find with an axe, because you're treating an axe fairly roughly and chopping hard, that you lose the bluntness quite quickly. So I've left it like this, um, which should put up to a lot of abuse, but still be able to cut, just not as well as a knife. Um, in terms of uh, chopping, it's good for chopping up little bits of straight grain, kindling, not much else. That's uh, what was intended. But in terms of slicing ability, it's pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty fun to mess around with. And uh, for throwing, well, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm terrible at, at throwing, and the one you just saw there, um, obviously that cut was there for a reason. It took me a few goes to actually uh, get it right. Uh, I think it's to do with the distance or, or something. I should really look at how to throw an axe properly, but uh, you can... Uh, it's just the right way. It's very satisfying. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think as a as a throwing axe, this is uh, this is really nice. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, so more videos coming up soon. I'm happy to take requests if you've got anything you'd like me in particular to have a go at, or any techniques you'd like me to try. Um, this went fairly well. This was a, a new idea on how to make axes and I've soon found that uh, there are problems with it um, but ones that can be tweaked and use virtually the same technique to get the same result um, basically just do the eye first. Uh, this technique for uh, sort of wrapping and welding uh, axe eyes is fairly um, well documented. Uh, one of the well if you look at original examples of Viking bearded axes most of the time they are welded at the back here um, and really there's not much difference between welding it at the back or the front. I, I believe, in uh, my theory at least, is that the reason it was done that way is because it made more sense from the stock that they had. I get nice flat stock to work with. Um, they would have had to have forged out from a lump. So it makes more sense to uh, work it down, uh, work out the rough shape of the blade, uh, split it, uh, draw out the uh, the, the eye and weld it around the back as opposed to um, forging it all out flat then wrapping and welding it just saves work um, so I think uh, from a modern perspective this technique works and there's you know the old trade axes you, you see um, during the, the, the early modern era which where the whole thing would be wrapped and welded including the blade and with a, a high carbon bit in there. So there's plenty of precedent for uh, an axe of this design and I believe that a weld in this position is just as strong if not stronger than one round the back. Um, I believe that uh, the one the back is under a lot more pressure. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it so it's good to be back and hopefully I can stay back and do some more videos and it'll be good.